to God the only God who saves us through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty authority and power which he had before time began now and forever amen our hymn this morning is when morning gilds the skies hymn number 392 Morning prayer continues on page 35 in our Book of Common Prayer.
Blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Spirit of God. The Jubilati found on page 37 in our Book of Common Prayer. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, O oh, the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who will made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Come to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Him. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning. Psalm appointed is Psalm 133 on page 648. We'll read alternate verses. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life for evermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and shall be forever. Amen. reading is taken from the book of Genesis 45 verses 1 to 15. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him and he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him. When Joseph made himself known to his brothers and he wept so loudly that Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his present. Then Joseph said to his brother, come closer. And they came, they came closer. He said, I'm your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not distress or anger yourself because you sold me here for God has sent me before you to preserve life for the famine has been in the land these two years and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest 
God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me father to Pharaoh and, the, and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus say your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of fam famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And know your eyes and eyes of my brother Benjamin so that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell, then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and, sweat, and wept while Joseph wept up upon his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. The Benedictus, found on page 40 in your Book of Common Prayer, please stand. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up a mighty Savior, David. You have made us strong. of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forbearers and to remember your holy covenant. This is the oath you swore to your father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn of our eyes shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death. I repeat in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading from the Word of God written in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, reading verse 1 to 2a and 29 to 32. I ask then, as God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so have now been disobedient in order that by mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy for God has imprisoned all disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Hymn number 455. Hymn 
Hymn number 455, the gradual hymn. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to Christ. Alle, alle, alle. and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And Jesus answered, I was sent only to the, lo the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. He said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. 
Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. to the sermon is hymn number 318, Fill Your Hearts with Joy. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer.
Our message today is from Matthew 15, 10 to 20. And I read, Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are the blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart, comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. In today's reading, the Pharisees earlier in the verse, in the chapter, the Pharisees and the scribes came to Jesus, and they asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. And Jesus in turn asked them, Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? He called them hypocrites and told them Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus was exposing the hypocrisy and the wickedness of the Pharisees. Jesus was exposing the hypocrisy and the wickedness of the Pharisees and scribes. They used their own man-made traditions as excuse for them to violate the commands of God. Jesus further states that it is not what we put into our mouth that make us unclean or clean people, but it is what comes out of our mouth, that which is in our heart. We should know that whatever goes into our mouth passes into the stomach, and is expelled from the body. But what comes out of our mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles us. For out of our heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Do we need to wash our hands before we eat? Of course we do. This will prevent us from becoming ill. But do we need to wash our hands in order to be ceremonially clean before God? No. No one can just wash his hands, eat, and say, I am acceptable before God. What is in your heart? What caused you to sin? We blame our sins on others, the devil, anything and everything, except ourselves. The Bible tells us in Matthew 15, verse 19, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. So instead of trying to blame everyone else, we should focus our attention on our heart, because this is where the real problem lies. So 
So you may ask, how should we live? Our first priority should be to clean our hearts. Having a clean heart is so very important. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear before a false god. David said, create in me a pure heart, O God. If we really want to see God, we'd better have a pure heart. There is no other way, believe it or not, we will all stand before God on judgment day, whether we have a clean heart or not. The difference is that only those who have a clean heart will be able to see God's face for all eternity. We won't want to see God if our heart is not clean. It will not be a pleasant experience. Let's just look at some ways that evil manifests itself in our society. Some weeks ago, we heard about a little girl who was taken from her school and her throat was cut and she was found wandering on the road. Passerby eventually took her to an hospital. The incident in Gregory Park, several homes were burnt down, some partially, and this was on two different occasions, leaving a trail of death, injuries, and several families displaced. Joseph's brothers planned to kill him, but instead they threw him in a pit and then sold him to foreigners for 20 pieces of silver. The persons committing these crimes are who we speak about in verse 19. They plotted, planned, and executed their evil upon others. Compare this now to the story of the Good Samaritan. He found a fellow traveler wounded on the side of the road. He dressed his wounds, took him to an inn, where he then left him with the innkeeper and says, look after him. He then gave him some money and said, if I owe you more, on my return, I will pay. There are several homeless people downtown. And on King Street, we see them on the news recently. On every given Sunday, you go downtown. You see people giving them food, giving them words of encouragement, and ministering to them. We must make cleansing our life priority and produce good thoughts from within. God is to be a priority in our lives. Nothing is more important than making sure our hearts are pure so that we might see God. We must take control of our thoughts. How do we plan to do this? One, be in God's word so that when a sinful thought enters our mind, we will be able to recognize it for what it is and know what course of action to take. Two, live in dependence upon the Holy Spirit, chiefly through seeking his strength through prayer. Three, we are not to feed our minds with things that will promote sinful thoughts. Four, we are to pursue hard after God, replacing sinful thoughts with godly pursuits and mindsets. Five, we can have fellowship with one another, with Christians, the way God intended. Six, more importantly, we must place our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. God cleanses our hearts when we repent and turn to him. He washes away our sins and gives us a new heart, one that is full of his love and a desire to please him. God has promised that he is going to transform us from the inside out in a way that leads to our transformation on a day-by-day -day basis. That we will learn to walk in his statutes and keep his rules and obey them as his people.
and God as our God. Ezekiel says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. We have been given choices and the consequence of our choices are known. I will give them, for those who are evil, Ezekiel also says, I will give them an undivided heart for those who are righteous, sorry. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove them from their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. And for those who are evil, he says, but as for those whose hearts are devoted to their vile image and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. There are many ways to cleanse our hearts, yes. It is our responsibility to repent. However, no amount of repentance can make our hearts perfectly clean. We need God, through the blood of Jesus, to do that. After David sinned with Bathsheba, he cried out to God, Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. If we are in Christ and walking in Christ, his blood continually cleanses our hearts. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purify us from all our sin. Amen. Let us stand for the Apostles' Creed, found on page 42 in our Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The suffrages B found on page 44. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Show your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your ways be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Creating us a clean heart, O God. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in your safety to the new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, please turn to page 177, call it for Sunday. Club Sunday after Pentecost, page 177.
Grant, O oh merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Benedict benediction found on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us. Love and serve all persons with the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Penitents, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using form B, let us therefore before God now confess our sins. Most Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The offertory hymn is hymn number 456. My hope is built on nothing less.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from this, on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many languages and tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer form C found on page 137. Page 137 of our prayer books. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin, into righteousness, and out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, According to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And 
we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit on these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray as we sing together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be. To share in the body of Christ. Though so we are many, we are one body because we all share one bread. Lamb of God, of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for us. The people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and, and we will sing that song of praise.
Number 594 is the next hymn. Hymn number 595 next. of the 
this bread, they shall live forever, they shall live forever, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up. On the last day, the drink of his and of man, and the drink of his blood, you do not have drunk in you, you shall. Of life within you, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up on the last day. The resurrection, the resurrection. I am the life, they who believe in me, even if they die, they shall live forever, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up. And I will raise them up on the last day. Yes, Lord, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. The hymn for the ablution is number 842, Bind Us Together, Lord. together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, oh, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body that is why we sing bind us together lord bind us together lord bind us that cannot be broken bind us together lord bind us together oh bind us 
Paid for the glory of God Purchased by His precious Son Born with the right to be clean For Jesus the victory has won Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, oh, bind us together with love. You are the family of God, you are the promise divine. You are the God's chosen desire. You are the glorious new wine. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, oh, bind us together with love. Our thankfulness in the post-communion prayer found on page 147 of our prayer books. Page 147 of our prayer books. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We upon whom your spirit shines give light to the world. Help us to continue in faithful witness to your word so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. strong Lord join our hearts Lord through your son make us one Lord in your body in the King Make us strong in faith and love, and defend us on every side, and guide us in truth, peace, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with us, among us, remain with us, and our loved ones near or far away. Now and always we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. It's good to see you all, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord another morning. A warm welcome is extended to all who are here with us this morning, and also our friends in cyberspace. A big welcome to members of the PNP group who are worshiping with us this morning. We thank you for coming, and we hope to see you again. We say thank you also to our celebrant this morning, Reverend Venice Guntley McKenzie, 
Thank you, Rev, for being with us another Sunday. We say thanks also to our preacher this morning, Sister Cheryl Costa. She getting good at it. Our priest, Father Craig Mears, is on leave, and Rural Dean Reverend Father Sean Major Campbell and Father Kurt Brown are on assignment, so if there is any situation that requires the service of a priest, please speak to Sister Mary in the church office, and she will make the necessary arrangements. Congratulations to persons who are celebrating their birthday this week. Lorraine Sims and Everton Powell, heartiest congratulations to you on your anniversary. And also to persons celebrating their wedding anniversary, Mr. Ebil Dawes and Mrs. Jacqueline Dawes, Mr. Alvada Coy and Mrs. Stel McCoy, Mr. Clive Nicholas and Mrs. Joan Nicholas. Can you put your hands together for them? extend condolences to the family of Reverend Father Whitson Williams, whose nephew died. Please uphold the family in prayer. Thanksgiving service for the life of Velma Garden will be held here at St. Matthew's on Tuesday, August 22nd at 10.30 a.m. And we are asking for your support to come and support the family. You know, Reverend Hilda is from here. The rest of the notices are in the bulletin. And we continue to receive donations for our outreach program. And we have this program on Wednesdays. Please have yourself an awesome day today. Until we meet again, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. Him for the recession is number 351. And we, we didn't have the collection during the singing of the theme song, so we'll have the collection during the singing of the first three verses of the recessional hymn. Thy pleasant grace was poured, 
And this was still their message, one church, one faith, one serve the Lord.